Good morning and welcome to this Sunday morning service. I trust that you will be encouraged and strengthened in your walk with God as we meet together this morning. Psalm 25 verses 1 through 6 says, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Let's pray. Lord, today we remember your faithfulness. We thank you that you walk with us and that you are with us each moment. We thank you for your promises and that you are new, they are new every morning. We come to you today and ask you to lead and to guide us. We worship and adore you. We say, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. This morning we come together to worship you and to hear what you would say to us. Bless this service and our time together. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Hello. 
Spirit tries to rule over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love Church. I hope you are all doing well. Um, greetings from our home to yours. I'll be reading today from um, Luke chapter 8 verses 1 to 15 if you want to follow along. Luke chapter 8 verses 1 to 15. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. The farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, 
It came up and yielded a, a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, when he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secret secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky, gr those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in a time of testing they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked with life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on, uh, but the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. Good morning, church. It's been a while since I've seen most of you. Fortunately, the tech team has come up with a solution fitting for the times. I am here to invite each one of you to send in a short video saying hi to the church. You can include your families, your pets, or your favorite coffee cup. An email will be going out later this week with the details for how to share your video. In the meantime, stay safe, sane, and hydrated. I have several announcements that I would like to make this morning. The first one is this. Our deacons want to encourage people to reach out and call in prayer requests as they come up. There will be a rotation of the deacons available for people to call or to text their request for prayer after the Sunday morning service as well as during the week. If people want to call or text another deacon couple, they are free to do that as well. This Sunday and during the week, Andy and Brenda Friesen are available. This afternoon, Pastor Darcy is inviting people to join him from 3 to 5 for a visit online. On Friday, you received a link to do this. This is open to everyone in the church. This is a way in which people can interact and visit with each other without being in the same place. We are starting a sermon series on parables from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus used parables or stories in his teaching whether he was teaching his disciples or whether he was teaching other people. These stories or parables gave people much to reflect on. We are starting today with a parable of the sower and the seed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives and in the world. We, thank, we pray for our missionaries as they are in different parts of the world. Father, would you give them peace and protection at this time? Would you help them to be able to continue to minister to the people and to see which, in which way they could do it the best? We also want to pray for those who are without jobs and who have lost their jobs in these times. Father, would you provide for them? And may, may we, as a Christian community, step up and help them. Lord, we also want to pray for our teachers and students who are finishing the year. Father, would they be able to finish and complete their assignments, and Lord, that they would be able to complete what they need to do. And then, Lord, we also want to pray for the researchers who are looking for a vaccine for this pandemic. Father, would you give them much wisdom, and would you continue to lead and guide in that way as well. And then, Lord, we also pray that this would be a time where we would all experience the fullness of Christ in a new way. And then, Lord, we also thank you so much for the people and the opportunity that we do have to give. And Father, would you bless the gift and the giver. In your name we pray these things. Amen. Just know, let me know when you're ready, Cam. Yeah, yeah I think we're pretty much good to go. Okay, okay. Is that over Yes. <laughs> You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Good morning. 
This uh, beautiful morning, we are starting our series on the parables from the Gospel of Luke. And the one that we're looking at this morning is about the sower and the seed. So I thought to myself, why not start off with, uh, with a bit of a, a joke? And uh, this one is relevant to our, to our theme this morning. There was a person driving out in the countryside and they're driving along and suddenly they noticed a farmer standing in the field. And so they slow down, they're just driving slowly, and, but there was nothing that the guy in the car could see what the farmer's looking at. So he just drove slowly till the next mile road and looked in the rearview mirror, the farmer's still standing there. He turned around, he went back, and he got out of his car and he uh, approached the farmer. He says, so what are you doing standing here in your field? So the farmer turns to him and says, well, I heard that uh, uh, when they give out uh, the Nobel Prize, they award it to someone who's outstanding in their field. <laughs> so, so I thought, hey, it's a farmer joke and it's a kind of a farming themed uh, parable this morning. When we think of uh, growing things, when we think of uh, planting seeds and growing, uh, many of you have uh, tended a garden over the years. You know what it's like to, uh, to grow vegetables and crops or maybe strawberries, that kind of thing. And there's many farmers in Ridgewood or many who grew up on farms. Uh, they, they know about the whole growing and planting and, and harvesting kind of thing. And uh, even already, Alina has uh, a number of vegetables starting to grow in our house, in the warmth of the house, and they'll be put outside in uh, mid-May. When, uh, when I think back over the years, I remember after we'd been married about one year, we went to Canadian Tire and we bought a little cactus plant, just a little guy about this big. And uh, uh, 24 years later, a year ago, um, Ned uh, passed away. It uh, withered up and, and died. But we have uh, a lot of uh, offshoots that grew over the years. We cut them off and we transplanted them. And so we have quite a few of the, uh, the offspring from that. We have the, uh, the fruit of that cactus plant. And not only that, some of the first ones which we uh, cut off years ago and started growing, we have the children from that one. So we have Ned's grandchildren. And uh, it's kind of, kind of interesting. Maybe for those of you who... Uh, have never taken care of plants at all, maybe have no interest in plants. Maybe let's look at this from a sports analogy. And in uh, tribute to our chair this morning to Stan, we'll use the Blue Bombers as an example. You think of uh, Blue Bomber fans or sports fans, they cheer for their team, they're very excited when they're doing well, they're, they have uh, great hopes and dreams for the team throughout the off season. Then the team starts playing and when the season starts and there's some wins and there's some losses, and maybe they're behind, maybe they're ahead for a while, maybe both throughout the whole season. Maybe there's a pulled hamstring and a torn ligament and a twisted ankle and those kind of things. There's a lot of hopes and dreams that they will do well. Then the end of the season and they're not in the playoffs or they make the playoffs but don't make the Grey Cup. Or like very recently, they win the Grey Cup. You know what, there's lots of cheering for those people that, that uh, really enjoy that. But you know what, there's an interesting thing about all of this. Uh, sports fans, they, when they're referring to their team, they say we. They don't say they, they say we. And you know what, there's personal investment in that. They're, they care for their team, they're rooting for their team, they're uh, involved emotionally and uh, even financially if they're season ticket holders or if they go to games. Um, they're very personally invested in how that team does. And I think that when, uh, when we look at the introduction, which I sent out uh, earlier this week to you, uh, there are two points that I had in there. One is that uh, parables uh, reveal ourselves to us. They, it's like looking in a mirror. We see ourselves. And second of all, they also show us the heart of God. And I think that uh, as we are considering this, this series in parables and as we think of how we are growing as God's children, he is rooting for us, he is hoping for us, he's wishing the best for us. With that, uh, let's jump into our, our parable for this morning. When we think of uh, parable, uh, it is in its essence a story. And you know what? There's something very unique about a story. You may not remember a sermon from 10 years ago or 30 years ago or two years ago, but chances are you'll remember a story from that sermon. There's something about a story that, that sticks in the mind. It just grabs a hold of your mind and your heart and you remember it. And uh, Jesus, as, an, as the uh, perfect storyteller, 
he knew exactly how to use that to, uh, to make sure that the, the, the things which he wanted to share stayed with his people. When we think of uh, our sermon this morning, the sower and the seed and the soil, uh, first of all, let's look at the three components of this parable this morning, uh, those three. And there is the, the, uh, the seed, uh, that would be uh, the Word of God. That is, whatever we have in, in God's Word, His, uh, His spoken Word, His written Word. And uh, in the parable, that is the same throughout. Uh, then we have the sower. And when Jesus was sharing this parable with all the people who were listening to Him, um, He was a sower because He was the one speaking those words. He was this one sharing that story. And nowadays, we could maybe say that uh, the sower could be anyone. Maybe it's a parent who is sharing God's word with their child. Maybe it is a Sunday school teacher. Maybe it's people at VBS and camp. Maybe it's a Christian in the workplace. Maybe it's a pastor. Maybe it's a, an author. Uh, there's many different uh, sowers, if we want to look at it uh, from that perspective in our world today. Uh, but in the parable, it is the, uh, the same throughout. And then the third part, the third component of this parable this morning is the, uh, is the soil. And there are four different soil types mentioned. Um, there's the, uh, along the path and in the, the rocky soil and in with the weeds and then the good soil. And uh, that uh, represents, uh, uh, we could say that that represents the hearts that God's word settles on. And it's, it's how we as his people respond to his word as uh, his word is shared with us as we hear it in our ears, we receive it in our minds, we process it, and it, is, uh, it settles on our hearts. And these four different soil types uh, reflect the four, four different ways that we can respond to God's word when it is uh, planted on our hearts. And so we want to look at uh, those four different soil types this morning, the two consistent throughout and the one which is the four different variables. So let's uh, jump right in and look at the four different soil types. As we consider uh, the first one, it landed along the path. And uh, when the sowers were sowing the seed in Israel all those years ago, they would kind of have maybe a, a bit of a pouch or a bag strap slung over their shoulder, and they'd have it full of seed, and they'd walk along a path in a field, and they'd be scattering the seed. Now, that's how they sowed the seed. They had some rudimentary kind of um, hoe, they would kind of plow, plow the field and uh, get a little bit of dirt on top of the soil and then it was in the soil and it would begin to grow. When the, uh, the sower sowed the path along the soil, uh, it's kind of interesting what took place. It says a bird came along right away and plucked it up and ate it. It didn't even have time to begin to grow. Now, in the analogy given to us later on, Jesus said that is like when uh, Satan uh, takes, removes, God's, removes God's word and God's word which goes out to each and every person. And just like it did that day uh, with uh, all of the disciples there and the other people in the crowd, uh, God's word settled on their hearts. And you know what? In this parable, the one along the path, uh, that, is the, that is the one that uh, Satan plucked it. He removed it from their heart. And maybe we could describe that person as a critical person. They're critical of God. Uh, maybe they don't like God. Maybe they don't believe in God. Maybe they don't like Christians. Anything to do with faith. Maybe they have a very hard heart. Maybe they are disillusioned. Whatever it is. But God's word didn't even begin to take root and to grow in their hearts. It was dismissed before even beginning to grow. Then the, the second soil type is the one that was on, on, uh, in the rocky soil. And in Israel, uh, in many places, on the farmlands, there's uh, a lot of rock just under the soil. There's a lot of limestone, let's say, just, just a little bit under the soil. Farmers, after a little while, they'd know where those areas are and they wouldn't want to plant soil there. But when you have a, a, a layer of rock just a little ways under the soil, the, uh, the seeds that are sown, they can begin to grow right away. They, they, they grow nice and, and, uh, and healthy as long as there's rain coming fairly re frequently. But as soon as there's no rain for a few weeks, 
the moisture in that soil goes down and then there's nothing left. And then after a few days of a hot, dry south wind, by then the uh, leaves are a, a lime, a light green. And a week after that, they're totally yellow. They've, uh, um, they uh, simply have, have dried up. And uh, Jesus compares that in this parable. He compares it to, uh, to the one who is led away by temptation. And, and I see it kind of like this. You have a person who, a uh, younger person, they're, they're uh, in faith, they're, they're growing, they're excited about their faith, and suddenly they, something else exciting comes along. Uh, they're led away by that temptation. And it uh, doesn't specify the, the, the temptation, but it just says that they are led away by their temptations. And um, they did not reach maturity. They did not end up bearing fruit. The uh, third soil type is the one amongst the weeds and the thorn bushes. And if you uh, look in, uh, at, at any uh, thorn bushes in our area, you can see that there's, there's no grass growing under it. There's hardly any grass. All of the leaves around the thorn bush, it keeps the sunlight from penetrating to the bottom. But when you have uh, something which you want to plant, whether it's vegetables in the garden or a crop in the field, when you have that crop growing and it's surrounded by weeds, uh, there's competition. There's competition for moisture and competition for nutrients, competition for sunlight. And um, you know what? The, uh, the grain, it gets choked out by all of the weeds that are around it. Jesus says the same thing happens to, uh, to this person in this uh, certain soil type. Uh, he co compares it with the, uh, the worries, the troubles of this world. He talks about the, uh, the different stresses that come along. And in, in our life today, in our world, there are so many. And uh, currently there's uh, the COVID-19. And maybe for others, it's, it's a family stress. Maybe it's children or, or parents, loved ones. Maybe it's work-related. Maybe it's family relationships. Maybe it's... Uh, uh, some mental illness, or maybe it's physical illness, financial stress. There's many different kinds of uh, worries and struggles that can come along and try and choke out a person's faith. It says that this person who was growing this in this soil type, that uh, the, the weeds choked it out. And uh, sad to say, it also did not reach uh, fruition, uh, maturity. It did not grow and reproduce. However, now we come to the fourth soil type. And this is the one which uh, we, we, we all hope we are, and we have uh, great anticipations of, of being that one. And this is a soil type that it says that it, uh, it bore a hundred times what was planted. Now, you know what? It doesn't say of just of those that grew or if it says of everything. But you know what? All of the, the, the seeds which the, uh, the sower had, had scattered, um, this fourth soil type made up for all of the four types together because it was an abundant harvest, and it was exciting. And um, this would kind of represent the person that uh, is, is growing in their faith, uh, God's word has taken root in their hearts and lives, and they are growing in their walk with the Lord. They have faced challenges and temptations to turn away uh, the weight of responsibilities and problems and setbacks and heartache and uh, the attack of Satan and whatever it is, but they have kept going, they have uh, maintained their walk with the Lord, though not perfect, though several steps forward, sometimes some steps back, but overall they've continued and they persevered, and they have reached this point of maturity in their walk with the Lord, and now they're bearing fruit, and it's so exciting to see that. This is the, the, uh, the one where uh, Jesus has some specific words about this person. He says that... Um, Verse 15 in Luke chapter 8, But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart. It's not often you hear that about having a noble and good heart. Who hear the word, they retain the word, and by persevering they produce a crop. Those are three things which Jesus says about uh, the ones and the certain soil type uh, of the good soil. Now, there are five points which I'd like to uh, like us to draw from this passage this morning. And the first one is um, seeking to understand and grow. Now, when Jesus gave this parable to the disciples and to many other people were there, who were there, um, he shared that word with everyone. You know what? That same word, those same stories went out to everyone who were there. It's that one seed, the, the one variety, the one seed went out to everyone. 
And we can say that for the most part, no one really understood what he meant. Maybe many thought to themselves, there's something this person must be trying to say in this story. I wonder what it is. Um, so many were curious, but you know what? Many maybe have dis dismissed it. Oh, I don't know what this, per this Jesus is talking about. I don't know, this, in, in frustration, in silliness, in whatever, in discouragement, they t many turned away. But you know what? The disciples, they pressed on. They kept going. They didn't understand, just the same as everyone else. But you know what? They had a teachable heart. And they were curious, and they wanted to know more. The one thing which we could say about the disciples was, even though they didn't know everything, even though they had a long ways to grow, they had a simple childlike trust in Jesus. Even though they didn't understand it, they, they believed in him, they trusted in him, and they wanted to continue. And so they asked him, what are you saying by this? You know what? None of the others asked Jesus. Maybe some of the others who eventually followed besides the 12, but overall the vast majority would not have cared. They just were wanting to have a meal, to see some miracles, whatever it is, have a good uh, stomach full of food. But the disciples, they wanted more and they were seeking. They were seeking to understand and to grow. I think that is a very important part in, uh, in all of this, not just dismissing things away, not just dismissing God's word, uh, but looking at God's word through uh, his eyes and asking him, what does he want to say to us? What does he want to teach us? Uh, the second point is uh, related to faith. And um, you know what? Looking at those four different soil types and considering the four different people and their responses to God's word, uh, let's look at it from a faith perspective. Like we could say the first one where uh, Satan took away God's word before it even began to germinate and to grow, we could maybe say that person was never a Christian. That person was, uh, was not a person of faith. And uh, in their, their cynic attitude, their critical attitude, dismissive attitude, whatever it was, they didn't even uh, accept God's word. They just dismissed it. Even just hearing the Bible being quoted, they just dismissed it. Um, then we could say the, uh, the, the last one, the fourth one, the good soil, where we can see that they grew through all of the challenges in life and they reached maturity and they were bearing fruit as a mature Christian. We could say definitely that they were a Christian. Uh, the middle two, it's kind of interesting. And reading in a commentary, they said that um, theologians have been debating for centuries. Were they Christians at all? Were they not? And uh, I'm not wanting to open up that discussion or de debate, but I do have a few thoughts on it. Uh, the one is that they started to grow. They were, they were growing, just the same as the one that fully reached maturity. The one that was on the rocky soil, uh, it was growing. But along the way, even though it had a good start, it was uh, led away by temptation. And the other one, though it was trying and continuing to grow, uh, the pressures of life, it was choked out by the things around it, and uh, it did not reach maturity. Uh, two things we can say about all of this uh, on uh, being faith-related. Uh, faith uh, the first one would be that only one of the four soil types did not even begin to grow. Didn't even turn green and send down roots and send up a stalk and begin to grow. Only one of the four did not at all. And we could also say that only one of the four in our parable this morning um, fully reached maturity, grew and to maturity and bore fruit. The third point that I'd like to bring for us this morning is this, and that has to do with Satan. In our world today, there seems to be generally things going to two extremes, either uh, just a complete dismissal of uh, Satan in our world today, in this day and age of technology and science, which can explain just about everything away. Uh, there's hardly any room for Satan to be responsible for anything in our world anymore. At the other extreme, uh, there are those who see Satan behind every little thing that happens and uh, the cause of everything and to pray against everything that Satan is trying to do. There's kind of two extremes. I think that we can see from our parable this morning that of the three reasons given why uh, people uh, did not grow to maturity, uh, Satan is responsible for, for, responsible for one of those three. 
He was responsible for removing God's word from their heart before it begins to, to take root and to grow. Um, the other two, again, are uh, those who have a good start and they are distracted by something else and led away by temptation. And the third one is <clears throat> those who are um, growing, but they have weeds and they're in the thorn bushes and they, they get completely uh, choked out by what's around them. So I think that uh, this does relate to us a bit of a fair balance in how we should be seeing Satan and his work against the church. Uh, of these three things which uh, went sideways, uh, he is responsible for one of those three. And um, the fourth point that I'd like to make for us this morning is this. Um, uh, success is dependent on the soils, not the sower. Now, after having said that, uh, there are two things which are absolutely essential in all of this. There needs to be a sower, someone who is bringing forth God's word. Uh, it is important that someone shares God, God's word with people in our world. And there's so many ways that we as a church and we as Christians do that. Uh, that is an, an, an essential. Someone sharing, bringing forth God's word. The other essential is the seed. And um, God's word needs to be shared and planted in people's hearts and lives so that it can begin to grow. Um, but there is, but it's, it's fascinating to see that the success depends on the soil type. Success depends on our hearts, our attitudes. Success depends on whether we are actively and eagerly continuing to pursue God despite the challenges, despite the distractions, despite the temptations in our world. Are we eager and continuing to pursue God and to seek God despite all of these things? Even though Satan may try to harass and hinder and distract us from what God is doing in our hearts and lives. Success depends on the soil type in this parable. And so our spiritual success depends on how we receive and how we process and incorporate and live out God's word. Do we have a teachable heart? Are we willing and eager to grow? Are we willing to have a simple childlike faith like the disciples did? even though we may not always understand, even though things may not always go our way, but are we willing to persevere? And the fifth point that I'd like to make this morning is this. Um, in all of this process, for the most part, it is gradual, not immediate. Now, I would say maybe if there is something immediate in this uh, parable, it would be maybe the seed sown along the path where the bird came and ate it up, where Satan took it away. That's kind of quick because uh, the seed didn't even take time to, to send any roots into the soil and send a stalk up. But in general, it's, it's, a very, uh, it's a slow process. It's a long process. And so when we are considering God's work in people's hearts and lives, we can't think of the immediate things all the time, but we need to look at it from the long perspective. For example, let's say um, you hear a sermon, and maybe in the sermon the, the person even says, so what soil type are you? If you'll note, I haven't said it yet in this sermon, and I won't by the end of this sermon either, but um, if you hear a sermon and the, and the speaker says, so what soil type are you? They're wondering what kind of an immediate response you're going to have to the word which they just shared. I think that with this parable this morning, we're looking at something which takes an entire season to take place from the time, and you know for a plant, it's their entire lifetime, from the time the plant begins to, to grow till the time it dies as a mature ripe plant, ripe plant having bore fruit. So I think we need to take that perspective in looking at ourselves and at other people as well. Um, to say that, um, to look at one single incident and just listen to one sermon that that person over there in that seat heard and to see their response that week and to say, nope, they must be based on this or that soil type. I think that that's not the way we need to look at it. And to understand this parable, I think that the better perspective for us in, in applying this parable in our lives will be more so to look back over the years and to look back over all the teachings we've heard over the years in our life, uh, looking back at all the sermons and, and all the various things and to realize that, you know what, uh, I can look at it from that perspective and I can see I'm more like this or that soil type. 
And the, the, the last point in the sermon is this. Um, I think that we need to, uh, um, what is my last point? Um, not everyone, we can learn from this parable that not everyone uh, receives God's word the same way. Not everyone responds the same to God's word. You know what? These four soil types, uh, they responded differently to God's word. The people who were there with Jesus, listening to his parables, listening to his stories, many continued to follow him, follow him, many went away, left discouraged, frustrated, whatever it was. People respond differently to God's word. And we can see that in this parable. We can also say that uh, people respond differently also to the teachings of God's word. Some accept God's word from this kind of a perspective, and others would accept God's word maybe from that kind of a perspective. And I think that would be maybe why we have different denominations in our world today. I'd like to uh, start the conclusion with, uh, with a passage of Scripture found in Colossians 1, um, verse 6. There Paul says, In the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as, as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it, and truly understood God's grace. Later on in Colossians, Paul also says in 3 verse uh, 15, no, 3 verse 16, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing, with, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. I think that um, when we think in conclusion of, uh, of our sermon this morning, there are two thoughts that I think we can draw from this. Uh, the first one is that... that uh, um, like I mentioned at the start, we can look at this parable and see ourselves in it. We can see ourselves. It is a reflection of us. And like I mentioned at the beginning about cheering on the bombers or hoping that the crops will grow well, the vegetables in the garden, whatever it is, um, there is much, uh, we, we can see God's heart in all of this. He cares for and wants what's best for us as his children. He wants us to grow and to thrive spiritually and to grow to maturity and bear much fruit. And so we can see uh, God's heart in this. We can see ourselves. We can know where we're at. And I think that the second point is at a very good juncture in our church family right now. We just finished a series on prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. And now we have this parable on four soil types. I think that there's a very, very wonderful application that we can make from this uh, parable this morning as we think and look ahead to our world around us, and to our loved ones. There are four, or three very specific things, four things, I guess, if we include the last one, but three things that we can pray for loved ones, for children, um, from this parable. Maybe it's children in our Sunday school ministry, at camp, at VBS, our loved ones who are growing in their walk with the Lord. And it doesn't matter if you're 7 or 87, we're all growing in our spiritual journey in our lives. I think that we can have four prayer points from our sermon this morning. We can pray for all of these learning and growing in their walk with the Lord that Satan will not remove God's word from their heart, but that it will grow and bear fruit. We can also pray that uh, God's children hearing his word, that they won't be led away by temptation uh, to believing other things, led away into sin, led away just plain led away from the Lord, but that they will continue to grow in their walk with the Lord. We can also pray, thirdly, that the distractions in life, the heaviness, the oppression, the, the, the problems in life won't choke out that, that growing and thriving faith, but that it will continue and nurture to reach maturity. And we can also, fourthly, pray that as uh, we prayed against those three things, but we can pray for God's work to, to carry on, to continue to take his seed, which his various sowers have planted in, in his people, and that despite all of these opposition, that they would grow uh, to reach the point of maturity and to bear fruit in their walk with the Lord. This is a wonderful parable. This is the first parable that Jesus shared in the Gospel of Luke. And it is also kind of a, a, a foundational parable in understanding all of the rest of the parables that we're going to be covering in the rest of this series, taking us till the end of June. I trust that uh, we have all learned something this morning, and I trust that the Lord will bless you immensely.
if you would like prayer, Andy and Brenda are available to pray with you this morning and during the week. Please call them or text them. You will find this information in our church directory. I will close with a benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.